There it is, right there. There's the cross, it's definitely hammered. out here on the field that we started out yesterday we didn't really find a whole lot but a group came in after us and they found a Saxon uh, silver penny so we decided to come back out here this morning and give it a little whirl I've been detecting about 20 minutes I haven't found anything this is my first find I found a flat button it's got a little cross on it you can't see it, it needs to dry out some more I think it has a cross on it it's got some type of design Anyway, that's the first find of the day, so hopefully my lucky Union Jack will be good for us. There's Plugmaster Ford, a couple more guys down that way. I think Missouri Mike's right up there on top of the hill. We got all the way over there that house, and it's in rough plowing. This is so hard to detect in as well. It's so difficult. Hurts your hips, hurts your ankles, hurts your knees. All right, let's keep going. This is Jeff Barber. He's with us in our group, and he just dug up a King Louis the 16th, 1790 or 96, uh, big silver. Check that out. Let's get a picture of that. We'll take it all day. Well, congratulations, man. Thank you much. Well, it is warming up here on our latter end of our trip here in England. Uh, we went to that other field this morning. I only found just six buttons and I gave up. I just went to the van and just sat down and rested. To save my energy, my legs are hurting walking all these big rough plowed fields. So we came back over here to the field where we were yesterday. We're actually on a field across the street that we haven't hunted, but it's so big and rough, I decided not to even do it and uh, give my legs a rest. So. Came over here, started, I already got two greenies, but I've got another one here, I want to show it to you. It's bringing up a 2021, looks like it's going to be a, just a farthing. I don't know what this is going to be. Sometimes these greenies are so wiped, you can't tell what they are. That's got something on it. Maybe when it dries out a little bit, well, it gets 
to be able to see a little bit better on it. Probably going to be a KG2 or I can't tell. All right, it's going to go like that for sure. All right, we'll put it in the bag and keep on going. Work in this corn patch. Nobody's been over here, so instead of working the big fields out here where it's easy, it's walking and digging, nobody's been in here. So I figured, hey, this is better chances of getting stuff. And I just popped this up. This is really neat. It's a, a star. That's really neat. I like stuff like this. I like relics. That's really neat have no clue what it went to. Looks like a snowflake, actually. Still in the old corn patch, or and now I'm in a cabbage patch or something, kale. Just got a 22 signal, and it's gonna be a KG2. I don't know if you can see his head looking to the left. It's kind of hard. These coppers are so wiped out, but these will be early 1700 coins. I enjoy digging them, but you'll dig a bunch of them, but. You really want silver when you come over here, not just these coppers, but hey, these are old coins you can't dig in the States. Well, I guess on the East Coast you can. Well, I moved back out in the field, headed over here to this double field where I found that Jeddon coin, and I just popped this up. It was ringing up at 1819, just like a hammered silver, but it's not a hammered silver. It's gonna be a, I believe it's gonna be a hammered copper. It uh, feels just like a hammered silver. It's real thin, wipe clean, but it's not a button. I don't see any button marks on it. Um, so it's going to be a Sahara copper. Well, still out here in this stubble field. Haven't found a lot. Uh, found a greeny and some, um, a lot of uh, a green brass. But I just got a 16 and thought it was going to be a button and brushed it up a little bit. And it is a Roman coin. Check this out. I'm kind of blocking the sunlight because I'm in the trying to block the wind. Uh oh, see that? Check that out. That is in perfect definition, too. Wow. Let me do some cleaning up on it real easy and let's see if we can get some more details. This is the best Roman coin I have ever dug as far as details. Check that out. I don't know who that emperor is going to be. I'll try to get my Roman coin app tonight and try to identify this. But there's the portrait. Looking to the right, you can still see the writing on this one. This thing has been dropped and not has been disturbed since I picked it up. I guess it goes that way. I'm not sure on these coins how they did them. Could go that way. It's got some writing on the very bottom of it. These are bronze coins, so you never want to put water on these bronze coins. But I came over here all by myself. All the other guys are in the other field. And I came and started just working this real slow. I'm so glad I did. Man, this is my third Roman. And I've got three different sizes. One size of a half dollar, one size of a quarter. And this one's about the size of a penny. Maybe just, maybe a dime. Maybe a size of a dime. Let's lay it down. See if we can get a close-up on it for you out of the sunlight I don't know who that is but we're gonna find out I have just been working this stubble pile everybody else is in the other field I've just been doing methodically just back and forth back and forth because the field is easy walking this is the more difficult so I figured nobody's out here doing this and I'm not too far from where I got that jet in yesterday, that Roman coin just a few minutes ago. And now I just popped out another silver hammered. Yes, I haven't even looked at it yet. Let's, I just popped it up and this is what I saw. There it is right there. It was ringing up a very, very low. These usually ring up like a 14. It was ringing up like 11. So there's the cross, it's definitely hammered. Uh, let's clean it up. Let's see what it's going to be. I'm not sure, but that's the king right there. I think it goes... I don't know. I can't tell. It's pretty eaten up. I think it maybe goes this way. 
It's maybe, I don't know. It may be an Edward the First Long Cross. That's what we're digging for, these hammers and getting everything else in between. All right, that is awesome. It's my third hammer on the trip. Let's get some pictures and let's keep on doing this little stubble field because it's definitely been paying off for me. Still in that same area and I see some writing right there. One, see if it focused two, three. So this could be a King George III farthing. If it is, man, it is worn out. It feels like a hammered copper. So more coins are still coming. There must have been something in here. Maybe there's some more hammers. Well, look what I just dug up. I just dug up an old stirrup. I don't know how far this is going to date back. It's not brass. It's uh, iron. But hey, that's neat. Been digging buckles here. Not too far away from where we dug that Roman coin and that seated. So maybe there was some, uh, some type of house or barn here. I'm not sure. It may be a Queen Victoria. Let me uh, put some water on it and clean it up. Let's see if we can get some identification and see what date it is. It's going to be a Queen Victoria. She, <clears throat> she ruled from about 1830s to 1901, or early, <clears throat> early 1800s to 1901. She was the longest reigning queen until Queen Elizabeth just surpassed her this past year, or this year. Anyway, I don't know if it's a, what, what size it is. I just can't get this mud off of it on the back, this uh, tarnish. Anyway, that's a good start. Let's keep rolling. This is England detecting for you. Just these big old fields. I got my first copper today. I don't know what this is going to be. I have to clean it up and get back with you. Yeah, this is just going to be a wiped copper. Won't be anything good. All right, let's keep on going. Well, I just dug this up and cleaned it up. I thought it was just going to be a big piece of lead trash. And I saw some writing on it and started cleaning it up. And this is a Jewish dreidel. They played this a lot of times at Christmas. There's the noon, the hay, sheen. Um, I, Gimel is usually the, the four letters on there, but different countries put different letters on there. And some historians even believe that this was brought over by the Romans, which I'm in the oldest part of England. The Romans first settled over here in Colchester. So there's no telling what this history is. Um, this is really neat. I like pieces of relics like this. This is probably medieval, post-medieval. Could be prior. Uh, the Roman soldiers even played with these uh, when they came over. Sorry if that wind is it's really blowing today. But I like that. There's the spindle there. The one on top is broken. That is really neat. I love history. All right. Jewish dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Well, I decided to jump the street, come over here to this other field, and just walking in here, check this out. Surface fine. That's an old pipe. Hopefully the wind's not too bad on you guys. Let me pull it in closer to me. But there's an old pipe right there. You get these down on the River Thames a lot, and uh, but didn't expect to get that out in a plow field. All right, let's keep going. Well, England trip is done. We did eight days of, uh, of digging, seven full days and two half days being eight days total. Had a good time, found a lot of good stuff, but I am so exhausted. If you ever come to England, uh, the Colchester Treasure Hunting Club is who I'm, I'm going coming over here with. They do a, a tours in the fall and do a tours in the spring. They take about six people, so you have to get up, get on it very soon. But uh, they take you out to all these fields and uh, put you on good spots and the host stays with you. And it's really a good situation. But I tell you what, you, if you ever come to England, you need to be in shape. You need to really get exercised and get your conditioning because it is a lot of walking, a lot of digging up and downs. And it's exhausting. Of course, you can work at your own pace, but uh, and which I did. I laid down and took naps out there in the middle of the field and just rested and did stuff at lunch and went to the van. I did all I could do. 
but I had a really, really good time uh, digging and digging with uh, my, um, Seth and, and uh, he was my roommate. Uh, he went with me before I dug with him up in Ohio last uh, earlier part of this year. No, it was last year. Plugmaster Forward, Forward Missouri Mike will be digging. Another guy named Jeff Barber was with us. And uh, so we had a really uh, fun time. And uh, so I got all my finds laid out before I have to go turn them in. We have to turn everything in. You can't take anything back. If you try to take it back and you get caught, you'll lose your passport. You'll get charged with smuggling and you just don't want to do that. And so we label everything. We put it in these bags. We give it in. They go through it all. And it usually takes about four or five months. You get the stuff back on a, on a if it can, comes back pretty quick, you have to pay the export license. And, but anything that's 50 years and newer, you can take home with you. But I just throw it all in the bag and let them go through it because you, you, over here, you never know what you may have. You may think it's a piece of junk, but they, it turns out to be in a, 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 a BC Roman coin. Who knows? So you throw it all in there, let them go through it, and then they'll uh, keep what they want to keep. If they decide to, they deem something treasure and they want to keep it, then uh, they'll let you know and they'll offer you a price. And if you take the price or you counter the price, then uh, you can uh, split that with a landowner. But it's a whole treasure process that you go through. It's not a big situation, but most stuff is just stuff that you'll see. It's just regular stuff. It's not really treasure. But every once in a while, you will get something that's treasure, and they have to report it as treasure, and then it goes through the whole treasure process. And so I still haven't got my coins and stuff but finds back from 2019 because I found those Saxon hoard, and so that's prolonged it, and COVID prolonged it. So maybe I'll get that back pretty soon. But all right, enough talking. Let me show you uh, what I've got here for this trip of 2022 here in England. As you can see, i got it all laid out on my bed. Quite a bit of stuff. I'll start over here. Got to found a lighter, maybe from World War II. We've got some uh, tacks, some uh, finials, things of that nature. Pocket knife, door drawer uh, holders and, and pulls and stuff like that. I don't know what this is. You can see it's kind of got a magnifying in, in it. A couple of crotal bells, too bad they're broken. A lot of different buckles. Just plain buckles we dig in the States. Now, these buckles here could date back in the 15, 1600s. Those three right there. Probably just horse tack. And uh, that buckle will date back pretty far. A key uh, thing. A couple of nails. A thimble. This is a Georgian period, which is going to put it in the 1700s. Um, decorative little things. Doodads. I don't know what you call those. That is what goes on, what you cut an apple pie with, the way you do the crust. I got a um, stirrup. And that I thought was a, it was a cannon. It is a cannon. But it's missing the crown up on the top. And that is a Royal Army Regiment hat pin. So I'm, it's broken off on this side and on top and on the bottom. But got a little piece of it. I got my Jewish dreidel. A little toy. Got a toy last time I was here. And uh, that's really neat. Um, dug a clay pipe. Just laying on top of the ground. Here are my bullets. I got some big ones. Medium ones. Smaller ones. Then large. Like an infield. Here's bell silt uh, lead. Maybe some lead. Uh, maybe some lead tokens there. These smaller ones. Maybe lead tokens from a long time ago. Not real certain. We'll find all that out later on. These are all my tom back buttons. Quite a few of them. And this is what you'll dig mo most of uh, other than pieces of brass. Here's all my flat buttons. All different shapes, sizes. All different types of things. And uh, here is my more decorative buttons. This is a Royal Army button here. We're not sure on what this one is yet. That's a livery button. That's silver. That's a silver button. And then some decorative pieces there. Second thing you'll dig is greenies. You know, these are all kind of modern on the very top row. And then the rest of them are going to be KG2s, KG3s, uh, KG4s. Uh, Queen Anne, uh, Queen Victoria. Uh, I didn't get a William. 
Uh, but that's what all those are, all those greenies. I'm usually the greenie king. I don't know how many. I, I got to count them up and see how many I got. I usually beat everybody in greenies. Then I've got some real interesting things. That right there is what these all three are called condor tokens, C-O-N-D-E-R. And these are special tokens. And they're all dating in 1794. And this is a Colchester condor token. So I got a local token. And then here's some, turn it over and you can kind of see the whale's flower on it. And then that's got a castle on it on that side. That's T. Hardy. Or this one's the castle one, yeah. But you can't see it. Those are very special. Uh, I'm glad I dug them. Here's a bucket list coin for me. This is a cartwheel penny. Now, those aren't there about the size of a half dollar in America. And when you put this up beside it, you can see how much bigger it is. And then look at the thickness between the two. And when these ring up, boy, do they ring up on the Equinox like a 33. I mean, they scream very loud. This I thought was just another greenie until I cleaned it off. And I saw that Florida Lee on it. You flip it over and you see that. That is a Jetton, G-E-T-T-O-N. And that's from 1380 to 1420. And uh, that is a great find there. When it fell out of the ground, it just fell over just like that. You'll see it in the video coming soon. Well, whenever I get back. There's a piece of broke silver, piece of melted silver, a crown, they call it. Then there is a... Um, Oh, I don't know what this one is. It's King Charles V. Um, I don't know if it's a sixpence or what it is. Let's see if we can find out. Oh, it's one shilling. One shilling. And then my last day, I, I dug this Queen Victoria, 1849. Uh, go back down here. These are coppers, but they're all hammered coppers. And this also is a local, this one on the very end, is a local Colchester trade token. So maybe I should put it up there. But these are hammered coppers. Just like they hammered silver, those are hammered coppers. We can tell by the, they're so thin. So thin. Then this is the thing that we really go for. We go for these hammered these hammered silvers. Only got three, and I believe one. I don't know what one that one on the left is. I don't know what it's going to be, but those two there, I believe, are going to be King Edward the First. That's going to date you back from about twelve, uh, late twelve hundreds to the early thirteen hundreds. Don't know the exact dates on that. And then my next great finds. Usually these are the greatest things I dig, but this year, check that out. Those are three Roman coins. And you can still see the the uh, the bust on all of them, especially that one, that Constantine. You can even read Constantine on it. This is so great of details. This is museum quality one. But um, but I got three different sizes. That's really neat. Um, this probably goes back to AD 100. This is probably AD 200, and this is going to be AD 337 to 340. So that is some old, old coins right there. The oldest coins I got right there. And uh, think about that. That coin is 1,300. This is 100. So 1,200 years before. That's just unreal. And the greatest find is this. This possibly could be a ring. There's a lot of rings like that that have been found. Uh, it could be just a piece of metal, modern. But I'm going to put it in there anyway and uh, let them determine that because there's a lot of ancient rings that are made like this. And this is my find of the trip. This is a 1380 to 1420 bronze. It could have been gold plated at one time. Bronze trader's ring. It's got a signet on it right there. And when they would trade, they would go and stamp their stuff. And that is my find of the trip i love that right there that is so personal to have that you can dig a lot of this other stuff but that is very personal so there's all my treasure quite a bit of it and this is what you'll dig 
and it's worth all the pains and groans and going and i wish we could have got more of the silvers and the romans and things of that nature but that's the way it is but anyway all these coins most of all those coins are six or 15 excuse me or 18 and 1700s and uh, these are all 1700 so that you get a lot of old stuff hope you enjoyed my videos and the wrap up and uh, if you ever get a chance to come over to england please do so and maybe one day i'll try to put a trip together and you can go with me and so uh, it's uh, kind of expensive, but just save your money, but it's worth it because you'll dig coins from the 18 and 1700s so much that you'll get tired of digging them. Believe it or not, you really will. And uh, But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, but remember the greatest treasure is not what you can come over here to England and find in, in these ancient fields. The greatest treasure is something even more ancient than that. He's called the Ancient of Days. Keep looking up, my friends. Keep searching. Until we meet again, I just want to wish everybody happy hunting and God bless.